for case 8, we have a case of altered mental status with no age given. Here you have an image from a CT. Just a couple more images that I'll toggle through for you. This is the last image. So the question is, what is the most likely diagnosis? And which of these diagnoses has the highest expected mortality? So these are different types of a hemorrhage you might have. So is it subdural hematoma, epidural hematoma, diffuse axonal injury, or traumatic subarachnoid hemorrhage? Uh, this is a subdural hematoma. In subdural hematoma, you have disruption of hemorrhaging veins, which span from the interior calvarium to the dura. In this case, you get a crescent-shaped blood collection collecting in the potential space between the dura and the subarachnoid. So your imaging clues are you have this extraxial collection. It crosses sutures and attracts along dural reflections. So that can help you differentiate it from an epidural hematoma. Uh, here you see the crescent-shaped uh, collection outside of the brain uh, along the inner portion of the calvarium. Uh, it's definitely crescent-shaped. It's definitely crossing sutures. And uh, it's definitely uh, along the falcine reflections of the dura there. Uh, the differential in these cases are you can have a subdural hygroma, so these are lower density collections, they tend to be more uniform. If you had a subdural lymphoma, you wouldn't necessarily be able to tell, uh, but subdural hematomas are going to be much more likely. When you have subdural hematomas, the poor prognostic signs are a hematoma thickness of more than 2 centimeters or a midline shift of more than 2 centimeters. Your answer to the second question is subdural hematoma. So part of this is because patients with subdural hematoma tend to be in much worse shape overall. They tend to be much older, and uh, they tend to have uh, much less, I guess, elasticity or much less potential for recovery. Epidural hematomas are the ones you frequently hear about uh, because without surgical intervention, they can be fatal. However, uh, it tends to be younger patients with trauma, fractures, and uh, this overall survival is better. Diffuse axonal injury can be debilitating, but death from that would be rare. Similarly, for traumatic subarachnoid hemorrhage, death would actually be rare. 